Hello, good morning, everybody. So today, I'm just gonna go over some of the cards that I bought at the LGS the other day for um, my mono black deck. I'm doing a Sauron the Necromancer uh, build. It's just a Graveyards Matters deck that, um, you know, wants to kind of have some sack at the bottom end, some acceleration to get to that kind of that five cost commander. Um, this is just another Wraith that will be in the 99, the Witch King of Amar. And I, I realized the text was a little crazy, uh, but it looked so cool. It kind of looked even foily from the, the glass. It's This is just the regular um, treatment of it. And it still just really pops. It's just really kind of amazing. These poster cards are really, are really flashy. So uh, this is just another nice wraith to put in the deck. It really like um, deters like opponents from swinging on you. When this card's on the battlefield, um, creatures that do combat damage to you are sacrificed at the end of turn. Um, it might even be at the end of the combat, but um, let's see here. It's the turn, end of turn. Um, and then, um, and the ring will tempt you actually too when that occurs, so it's very interesting. Um, additionally, just by discarding a card, you can provide this thing with indestructibility till end of turn too, so it's... It's a kind of kind of a whacked out card. Really good in brawl. Um, I'm I'm seeing. I hope it kind of translate to the the EDH streets too. So I'm excited um, for my wraith deck definitely. So there's um, there's a nice one we got there. Uh, we did definitely splurge on this one. Uh, we definitely like you know took the inventory they had. Um, really took it to our advantage just to kind of pick up what they had um, that will be like definitely serviceable for this deck. So a Nykthos, of course, will be very good. It will just add um, mana based on our devotion by paying two and then tapping this. We'll choose that color and add uh, to our mana pool any amount of mana of that color equal to our devotion to that color. So it'll be benefiting us from playing all our black permanents. Uh, we'll definitely have like a Sacrifice Matters type um, of build on the bottom end. We'll play cards like Jadar. We'll play cards like Bitter Blossom. So we'll have like a steady stream of things to sacrifice. Skull Clamp will definitely be able to help us get there. Some things will be dying too. I'm in this deck just in general, so Skull Clamp should be a nice a nice fit. Takanuma. This one's just a nice channel land, so yeah, this one is the one where it's reduced by some amount of legendaries that we have for the channel cost from our hand. Um, we will mill um, a certain amount of cards, which is three, and then return a Planeswalker Graveyard to our hand. And of course, it costs one less to activate for each legendary creature control. Of course, you can just play it for, as a land too, so it's very good. Crypt of Agavine. This was, um, Ray was there at Commander Games, and he just, just really helped me kind of like, you know, get some ideas for some additional um, lands that perhaps we could play in this, this black deck. And this one just fits the build completely. It was just a nice pickup. Crypt of Ag Agavine enters Battlefield Tap, sure. Adds um, Swamp Tier Mana Pool, and then for the two colorless and tap, add add Swamp Tier Mana Pool for each black creature card in your graveyard. So yeah, we'll definitely be um, accruing um, creatures into our graveyard, so um, that will definitely be beneficial for us. We'll definitely be netting on that one. Priest of the Forgotten Gods. This one is a really nice kind of enabler. It gets us... Um, we, we will have to sacrifice two other creatures. And then um, any number of target players each lose two life and sacrifice a creature in the process. That's very good. And then I get to also add two swamp and draw a card. So it just keeps that gas going. So a very cool card. Has to do the, has the criteria for the two other creatures. That's important to know. Emergent Stone. So we're just thinking of like, you know, lands that, you know, might have some utility. So this one's an interesting one where it adds colorless de facto. And then for one colorless and a tap, sacrifice emergence zone, you may cast spells this turn as though it had flash. So it kind of gets you into a flash zone, um, you know, nice mid game, late game kind of activity there. If you want to kind of get under something, um, maybe get something onto the board before your opponents can respond, um, you know, at their end step, that seems like a very good card, emergence zone. Here's the Dothi Voidwalker, just like your typical you know, slot in for any black deck, really, that plays creatures and wants to take advantage of graveyards. So, you know, we'll definitely have, like, um, Mesmeric Orb in here, and um, that will definitely help us kind of fuel our graveyard and even maybe take advantage of it with a Dothi Voidwalker. 
Uh, so that one would be kind of nice, um, where we can have some selection for the Douthi. And uh, we can get offensive with it and attack with it, or we can sacrifice it and utilize it to get that, that card from that graveyard. Um, or that's in the like, exile zone at that time with a void counter on it. So that's a nice one. And, you know, hopefully um, bring it back. You know, hopefully bring the Douthi Voidwalker back, you know, and do it. Do some more things with it. You know, definitely play the Graveyards Matter type of action. Um, this will be a de this will be um, just like a feature of the cards I got, uh, and then additionally, what we'll do is um, I'll kind of look at the the arena list and um, kind of compare and contrast, um, remove cards, upgrade cards as it goes, and uh, then I'll have a, basically a more um, you know presentable deck for y'all to look at pretty soon. So I'm very excited. So um, Maze of If this is this is a you know I I kind of was just looking through all the lands, just getting ideas. This one's an interesting one. Um, you know, I don't really like the fact that you can't tap it for mana. Um, it is, has a very powerful effect. This is a very kind of a more rarefied effect where you can just remove creatures from combat, though. Um, so uh, it's, it is a very interesting card. There's no doubt about it. So I'll have to think about that one. Um, probably on the maybe side on that one, to be honest. <laughs> Just because I really prefer having lands, I don't have too much. In a, I don't have too much of a de of designated like ramp um, package like maybe green can do. So this is what it will have to be. Um, additionally, I have the kind of these uh, animate sweet packages like um, animate dead and persist. That I picked up. I think there's also just another one mana animate um, that basically reanimates a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. So um, I'll be looking out for that one too, but um, I did pick up the animate dead. So that's this enchantment that you can, you can actually resurrect any card, creature card in, in any, in any graveyard. So definitely a powerful effect and it will remain on the battlefield as long as this does. It'll also have a minus one minus O. It's not too bad. Pretty freaking good. Uh, Yogmoth. Um, this one is just the nice one where you can get some uh, value from your um, your creatures. We'll definitely be resurrecting creatures with the um, Sauron too. And they might not always stick, so this might be a nice one where they do their damage and then we can go ahead and response, sacrifice them and get some value out of it. So that's a nice one for us for sure. Lord of the Void. With Sauron the Necromancer, there's a, definitely a premium on doing combat damage or having enter the battlefield triggers, and Sauron's gonna have, help us do that with cards like Lord of the Void and Ancient Brass Dragon, uh, where we're just gonna be getting into combat damage and um, we're gonna be able to take the, accrue that value because our creatures will be coming out of the graveyard hasty. So Lord of the Void seems like a nice one for us where we can just slam into the opponent and, you know, look at the top seven of the cards um, and then put a creature card from amongst those uh, seven onto the battlefield under our control. So a nice one there for sure. Here's Persist, the aforementioned, you know, resurrection cards. This is just, this one will do non-legendaries only um, and they'll also come in the battlefield with one counters on it and that's not too bad for us. So Persist, definitely have a nice, some nice, Enter the battlefield creatures for sure. Ravenous Chupacabra is one of those where it just comes out of the yard, gets some immediate value, has some selection with some removal. Seems good. Here's just our basics, kind of basic land ramp here. Felwar Stone, um, Arcane Signet. I'm sure there is some, you know, other, um, you know, two mana rocks that maybe, maybe would uh, benefit us too, so. I'll definitely be on the look for that. So I'm not just, I know Mindstone would be pretty good as well. Uh, they did not have that at the card store yesterday, unfortunately. Um, Swift Boot Boots and Lightning Grooves, of course, would be very good for this deck. For the Sauron the Necromancer. Um, additionally, we have the Spring Leaf Drum here. This is gonna be good for our low end to just tap creatures for mana, of course. Very nice for us. Nice acceleration. Soul Ring, this is just another nice mana piece for us. There's no doubt about it. Thought Vessel, perfect. Just, you know, no maximum hand size. We like that. <laughs> Bonders Enclave, this is kind of a sneaky one with all our Nazgul we're going to be playing. So 
just to have the fact that we can tap this and pay three to draw a card is really nice, especially if we have the creature with power four or greater. It's like kind of a no-brainer, what a good one. This could go into a lot of my decks that I probably don't have it in, and I really should add it. Bonders Enclave, fantastic. Um, Tyrite Sanctum, this one's kind of an interesting one. Um, just more utility land ideas, really, you know, because we've been playing mono black, so we'll definitely have some slots. I definitely would probably want to designate the slots um, to like the uh, Cabal Coffers and the Cabal Stronghold. So this is just kind of getting ideas though, where maybe this will slot in, you know, and we can, you know, make our commander maybe a god and, you know, make give it indestructibility and such as those things, those valuable, valuable keywords. And then um, Phyrexian Tower. So that's just another nice one. It comes down, it can pay for colorless, fantastic. Then we can sacrifice a creature to add uh, double black. This card is so nasty and um, it fits into like, even you can play this, I believe, on Brawl at the moment. So it's really a sneaky card and it's, it's like, it has that potential to really just put you over the top and um, really have those surprising turns where maybe you, you know, utilize an additional mana that, you know, usually wouldn't have access to on that type of early sequencing. So that one's a really nice one there. So um, let's just kind of like, just look at our commander here just pop it out real quick so you can kind of get an idea of what we're working with. I got kind of excited just to get into the card, so apologize. I just kind of skipped over our guy here and just went straight into it, but um, it is what it is. Let's see. There it is. Fantastic. Sauron the Necromancer. So that is the three colorless, two black. Legendary creature avatar horror with menace. Whenever Sauron the Necromancer attacks, exile target creature card from your graveyard. Create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 3 3 black wraith with menace. At the beginning of the next end step, exile that token unless Sauron is your ring bearer. So it's a very cool, just kind of like a Doors of Durin effect. Maybe not as fast as that card. And that's why I had to pay, kind of play a lower bottom end to kind of um, get us there with some acceleration. And, uh, so yeah, that's that's gonna be kind of the uh, the gist of the deck. Um, we'll definitely be looking for some sack fodder to get still, like with the Jadar and um, Bitter Blossom. So those are some cards I still have to acquire. But what I'll do is I'll just kind of this is just like an entree into um, you know some of those cards I splurged in over the week. Um, it is spring bake, so I hope you're all having a wonderful break. Um, if you are um, a, a teacher or um, you know it is your time to kind of relax and getting that time, um, at least in Nevada right now. So, well, that's about it. So I hope you have a wonderful day and um, cheers. Uh, I look forward to you in the next video.